Welcome back to Undulations. This is the second video in my series about the Arturia Microfreak. And in this video, I want to look a lot more at using dynamics to enrich the sounds that we're getting out of the Microfreak. So that's going to be the low frequency oscillator or LFO and the cycling envelope module. Now, we're going to be looking at those separately. We're going to be looking at them together. I'll show you some basic patches and then got some specific goals in mind. I want to show you how to make Krell sounds on the Microfreak. So that's something like what you heard at the beginning of the video. Talk a little more about that in a minute. And then I also want to push into the territory of granular synthesis on the Microfreak. So we'll be getting to that in sort of the second half of the video. All right, so let's get started and take a look at the LFO. All right, we're going to start with the init patch and I'm going to take us up to the two operator FM, uh, dial the amount back a little bit. And, you know, we've got knobs on this synth that we can control the sound with. I'm going to change the wave knob here. So that's changing the ratio parameter. And I can do that in a cyclic way. And that's just sort of emulating the type of thing that you can do with the low frequency oscillator module. So I'm going to set that up by going over to the mod matrix and I'm going to just go to where the LFO is the source and the wave is the destination of modulation. So when I push that right now, it's set to zero. So there's no, no influence, but as I turn the knob, I'm going to go up to say uh, 25 on this and then we'll start to hear the low frequency oscillator change the wave. And that's fairly slow. This is the point to talk about the LFO sync setting. Right now the light is on. I've got the lights sort of blacked out to make it look a little bit nicer on camera but right now the sync mode is on and so when you change LFO settings in the sync mode, you get divisions in reference to the rate of the sequencer and arpeggiator. And so I'm going to turn sync mode off. So now this is just sort of a free setting and the LFO on the Microfreak can go from 0.06 Hertz. So that's a time period of about 16 seconds. And that is quite slow. And then as I start to boost it, you'll hear that it can go quite fast. It can go up to 100 Hertz. Now, before I leave the speed, let me just say sort of as a tip that if you don't really care about what your tempo setting is, you can turn sync on and turn the tempo way, way down to 30 BPM, which is the minimum. And then you can turn the sync down to a eight to one ratio. And what that'll do is slow the LFO down even further. And so now it's got a period of about a minute. And so that allows us in certain types of music, you might want to do something that's a very slow modulation. But I'm gonna turn sync off and turn the rate to the few hertz so you can hear it and this is a good point to talk about the modulation depth and the uh, setting of whatever parameter you're modulating right now I've got the ratio set at 50 okay so if I were to just turn the uh, connection between the LFO and the wave all the way up to 100% that would basically sort of like overwhelm the 
wave value. So when I push that, you'll hear sort of a two-state vibration. Okay, and you may not want that, so it probably makes more sense to turn the LFO down to something more like, I don't know, 40 or 50, and then that sounds a lot more like what you might expect. Slow that down. And then the same sort of thing, if I leave, since the modulation on the LFO is bipolar, if I didn't change the wave and left it set either too high or too low, then you might not get the effect that you want either. So if I have it in the middle, it's this. But if I drop the ratio all the way down, it's as if part of the LFO signal is being clipped. And then if I bump it all the way to the top, you can clip it on the other side. So these sorts of things might be fine, but just be aware that you probably need to set a parameter value as well as the depth for any sort of modulating of it in the mod matrix. Okay, and then just a few more settings on the LFO. Uh, you've got a shape choice. So right now we're doing a sine wave. You can do a triangle. A saw. A square. A stepped random. And a smoothed out random. And the last thing is that buried down in the utility, there is a setting, we'll do this in a little while, that allows you to change the LFO reset. So now, before we leave this patch, I just want to talk about another basic thing about the MicroFreak and setting up modulations. I've got this right now, running the sign on the LFO, and you can also not only target a knob parameter, but you can also target a button parameter as well. So what I'm gonna do is run the uh, cursor over here to assign one for the pressure, and I'm gonna push assign one, and then press shape for the low frequency oscillator. And so what that's gonna do is let the pressure impact the shape of the LFO. So let me, uh, give that, I'm going to just boost it all the way to 100 and maybe that'll be okay. So now, if I don't push hard, it'll be this sine wave. Then if I start to apply pressure, that's the, that's the step, to, or sorry, smooth random. So let me back off on the um, parameter value. Maybe something like 50 would be better. So I want to continue briefly of using a button as a target and do a patch that involves the arpeggiator. Um, I've set it to init. I'm going to again go to the uh, two op FM and then I'm going to turn the ratio down a little bit. And I'm going to, I'll call out some of these settings, but I plan to put detailed patch notes in the description. So if you're curious, you can check that out. And I'm going to put a little bit of attack on this and like 75 and then run the decay about 1.5 seconds. And uh, put the sustain at zero. So we've got like a blip that's going to suit a arpeggio. And then just want to make the point that sometimes you have to really think about whether you want to have the LFO reset or not. If you're trying to do something that is a longer time scale than your sequence or arpeggio notes, then you probably want the LFO to be uh, not resetting. So that's the way I'm going to leave it. That's the default is to have the reset off. I'm going to turn the sync off, set the LFO rate to about 0.08 hertz, and then I'm going to set the LFO shape to triangle, and I'm going to do an assignment here on the mod matrix of the LFO to 
a sign number one where I'm going to make it the range. Okay, so that's this uh, octave range setting. And then basically what that's going to do is allow me to modulate that range of an arpeggio uh, by the LFO. And again, we want to make sure since the signal is bipolar from the LFO, we don't want to have it sort of slammed to one side. So I'm going to boost the arpeggio range to two just to get it closer to the middle. And then I need to dial in a little bit on the mod matrix up here for what I did. I'm going to set that to 60. And the last thing that I want to do, just to give you an idea of how that some of this stuff can be kind of subtle, I'm going to add a link between the LFO and the pitch and I'm just going to set it to 1. And uh, what that's going to do is have the pitch of the note just sort of drift a little bit. And it gives kind of a cool effect. But it's, it's rather subtle. I'm going to turn the arpeggio on. And uh, I think that uh have the BPM set to something like uh, 110 maybe. And so I'm going to turn the key hold on and we'll play some chords. And you can hear as the LFO goes through its cycle that the octaves on the arpeggiator change as well. And you get a little bit of drift of the pitch. Okay, and then last thing on the topic of buttons as modulation targets. Last night I did a patch, and uh, we'll just take a look at that without really going through it. If you think about some of the stuff we've done, we've used the LFO to target the octave for the arpeggio button, and then we've used the pressure to target the LFO shape. But you can actually use the LFO to target its own shape. Okay, so that's pretty cool to think about and so I've got set up in this patch a LFO connection to the pitch and then on assign one it's set to the LFO shape and then on assign two I've got it set to the LFO rate so it's a lot of uh, self-interacting types of things and this is the sort of thing if you think about with digital synthesis we're enabled to do this where that I've got a signal that I'm changing the shape of that signal and the rate of that signal with the signal itself. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to put a uh, hold on the keys and then now I'm going to hit a note uh, down here. <laughs> And bear in mind, there's no melody really coming from a sequencer or an arpeggio or anything like that. This is all coming from the LFO. And what I found was that as I turned the LFO rate, sort of the, the bass, you can get different melodies and uh, different rhythmic patterns that are not just simply sped up, it turns it into something completely different. Alright, so we're going to go back to init and I talked in the last video about being able to modulate a modulation and so we're going to do just that in this patch and you'll see sort of at least one case where it's pretty handy. What I'm going to do is set the synthesis type to super wave and let me uh, turn the wave down to saw and then I'm going to set the detune to about 50 and the volume of the detuned parts to about 50 also. So that sounds like this. And I think filters are going to be fine as they are. I'm going to maybe put a little bit of uh, attack to it. Um, and then not much decay. This is not really critical, but the critical thing though is I want to talk to you also about 
how to control the volume from the LFO. And if you think about that for the cycling envelope, uh, that turns out to be pretty important. And so we'll use that certainly later in the video, but even with the LFO, all right, for the, for the regular envelope, you've got the amp mod setting and that couples the main envelope to the volume. But how do you deal with uh, trying to make the LFO control the volume? One way to do that is to have it target the sustain. So that's what we're gonna do in this case. Uh, I'm going to turn on paraphonic because I'll be wanting to do some chords and uh, I'm going to turn the LFO sync off so we're just going to have a free running setting. I'm going to put that at about 2 hertz to start with. And so what we're going to make here is a tremolo patch and this is a case of wanting to have it sort of sound the same every time you press the note. And so to do that I'm going to go down in utility, hit preset and then go down to LFO retrig, hit the button on that, turn it to on, and then can come out of that and press utility. And so now the LFO is gonna retrigger every time we hit a key. And uh, I'm gonna leave it set to the sign shape because that's nice for a tremolo. And so we're kind of all ready to just really talk about the mod matrix. The first part of this, as I've already suggested, is that we're gonna have the LFO target, the sustain. So to do that, I'm gonna put it over to, from LFO to the assign one column, and then I'm gonna move the sustain knob. And so now that is a connection that's set. And when I press the button here, I can change the LFO to sustain amount. I'm gonna set that to 10. And take a listen to that at this point. Then the next thing I want to do is make it so that when you change the pressure of the key that it changes the rate of that tremolo. And so to do that, all I do is set the pressure as a modulation source. And then here on assign two, I'm going to change it to the LFO rate. And I'm going to set that value to about 25. And so I want you to take a listen to that. And I can hear it, but it's not as pronounced as I'd like it to be. So what I'd like to do is have the pressure also target the connection between the LFO and the sustain. So to do that, what I'm gonna do is set the cursor right there, and then I'm gonna push this assign three button and I'm just going to move the cursor back to that initial connection that we set up. Set the LFO to sustain setting. Let off of that. So then that's made the connection, but then you got to make sure to scroll over to the assigned three place on the grid and then press that to change it. And I'm going to change that to about 20. Okay. And so we've got LFO to sustain as a way to get the tremolo, and then we've got pressure to that LFO rate to make the tremolo change as we apply pressure. And then also we're deepening the modulation of the sustain with pressure as well. So that's like this. And so it's a lot more clear to hear in that case. And so there can be some cool effects that sort of remind me of uh, cassette tape type effects where that you can have a slow tremolo and then as you boost frequency. You can change the tremolo with it. Now this is also a good opportunity to show off the bandpass filter. Let me uh, press hold and put a note down low. And you can hear the slow variation because I don't have any pressure applied. I'm going to come up an octave and put a couple more notes in. And then even further, put another one up here. So that's sort of our limit with the paraphonic. But then I'm going to 
go to bandpass filter and set the resonance on that and you can sweep through these notes that I've put down and so right now I'm in the upper octave and if I apply pressure to this one you can hear that in paraphonic mode we've got control with the tremolo there but down at the lower note it's still got the slower cyclic variation now bear in mind that another way to use the LFO to make a tremolo would be to have it change the cutoff frequency so you could get a volume variation in that way but that would affect all of the notes in paraphonic mode together so this sort of thing where I'm using the pressure to control the tremolo of each note independently that's something that this sustain method is good at because each note has its own digital VCA so I talked some up front about doing Krell sounds or Krell patch and what's that all about so the term Krell relates to a mid 20th century science fiction movie called Forbidden Planet and the Krell are an alien race and there's a music associated with them. It's kind of a haunting and ethereal echoey type sound and if you were to sort of simply characterize it, it would be that the uh, low notes are kind of slow, so think bowing, and then the very high notes come much more rapidly, sort of uh, plucking everything in between and it's a little bit a tonal, not really well-defined pitches, and it's not exactly on a fixed tempo either. So it's kind of a cool sound, and it's become a popular thing in modular synthesis as a way to sort of like benchmark a synthesizer. So we're going to do that with Microfreak, and uh, if you want something as a point of comparison, Make Noise has a nice video about doing this on their no-coast synthesizer. And I'll put a link to that in the description. So back to the Microfreak. So the first patch that I did seemed sort of convoluted, but it sounded okay. I'll play that towards the end of what we're doing here. But uh, the second one that I came up with is actually quite straightforward. There's just a little bit of a secret to it that I'll tell you about at the end. And so let's just dive in here and... Uh, the filter we can leave alone. Um, all I'm going to do is set the uh, attack to zero, the uh, decay release to zero, and then the sustain to 100. So it's just box shaped and leave the LFO retrape off. And uh, I'm going to turn the sync off the LFO and then I am going to set the rate to about four and a half hertz and then I'm going to set the shape to stepped random no paraphonic and then the two key things and they make a lot of sense based on what you just heard about the Krell patch I'm going to have the LFO target the pitch and so for that, I'm going to very precisely set that to 85. So that's going to give us our sort of spooky melodic changes. And then the next thing I'm going to do is have the LFO control the LFO rate itself. So I'm going to press assign one and then move the rate knob and then have that parameter connection be right at 30. So what does that mean? It means that when the sample and hold goes high that the pitch is going to go high and that the LFO rate is going to go high also so it will be fast and then when it goes low pitch will be lower and the rate will be slower. So that sounds Krell like to start with. And so I'm just going to turn on the hold and press a note and if you listen to this That doesn't sound very good at all, and yet the thing to realize is that for the init patch, you're just using the basic waves 
synthesis mode, which is fine for some stuff, but for this, it doesn't really work that well. And all I did is poke around and try and find something that works better. And it turns out that the Carplus Strong synthesis method, if you set the bowing to somewhere around 65, and then you can leave the timbre down, so that is the position, and then uh, that turns out not to really matter because we're only going to be holding a note down, so that first strike doesn't really matter that much. And then the main thing is the decay, which I'll set to about 54. And this sounds so much different, and uh, I really like the way that it sounds. I'll bump the rate up a little bit. And so to me, one of the cool things about it is that because of the Carplus Strong synthesis, uh, you can set that decay and it gives it sort of a reverb-like quality. Okay, so I like that quite a bit for the amount of effort that we've put into it, but I'm going to go to a, another one that I did, and this is just sort of an extension, some changes in some of the settings, uh, similar to what we just did, and we can take a listen to that. Which I thought was pretty cool, and then even a little bit more complicated is uh, this one, which I did, and I figured that you'd eventually have to use the cycling envelope for sure to get this sort of thing. I didn't know about the trick with the car plus strong, so this is what this third one sounds like. Dubstep Krell. Okay, so now let's start talking about the cycling envelope, which is a really powerful feature of the Microfreak. To begin with, I'm just going to change our default synthesis mode up to the super wave, put it into a square wave, drop the detune a little bit, and I'll leave the volume about in the middle. This is just to give our ears a little something different to listen to. Okay, and then I'm also going to just make the regular envelope not have any attack, not have any decay, and so it's just basically being gated by this envelope. Now, one thing to say immediately is that the cycling envelope is not by default connected to anything else on the synthesizer. The main envelope has this amp mod button that lets us control the volume with the envelope but the cycling envelope needs to be set up through the mod matrix. That's very easy to do. And so the first thing we're going to do is make this connection in the upper left hand corner of the mod matrix. I'm just going to push the button. That's connecting the cycling envelope to the pitch. And I'll turn that up to say something like uh, 25. And that's going to allow this envelope to give us a little bit of pitch change. 
And the way that I'm going to start that to begin with is just by going into envelope mode. There are three modes for the cycling envelope. Envelope mode, run mode, and loop mode. And we can see what those do in a second. But I'm going to hit a key, see what we hear. Okay, so you heard that pitch change. And then with the amount knob, I can basically control the effect that the cycling envelope has on the pitch. So if I turn that to the middle, you'll get less of an impact. And then down, you'll barely hear it at all. So this is something that is very useful about the cycling envelope, which is that you can set up a lot of connections on the mod matrix but then through the amount knob, control them all simultaneously. On other things like the LFO, you're only able to control the connections independently through the mod matrix. Now, let's keep exploring. The rise time is a way to change the shape of the envelope. And you have independent control over the fall time. Then there's also a hold slash sustain knob that in envelope mode, it just behaves as a sustain that's quite similar to what we have on the main envelope. So now when I do that, it's going to go up. And then it comes down to a plateau pitch. But if you'll notice, you don't hear that last little bit of the envelope. And I can explain that. We don't have any actual decay for the amplitude, so if we want to hear that, we have to add some of that. Now when I do it, we're at the sustain level, and then when I let off, we'll hear it. So it detunes as it fades out. So there are some similarities between the cycling envelope and the main envelope, but there are also similarities between the cycling envelope and the low-frequency oscillator. But the cycling envelope is quite different from the LFO in one aspect. The LFO is bipolar, and it sends signals that are positive and negative, whereas the cycling envelope is unipolar, sending positive signals. Now, don't get me wrong. You can actually make a negative connection on the mod matrix. When I push a key, it's going to bring the pitch down. It's at the sustain level, and then when I let off, it'll come back up. So I'm not saying that you can't go negative with it. I'm saying that you either need to choose going positive or negative. And this becomes particularly relevant when we go into the next mode, which is the run mode on it. Now, this becomes more like a classic LFO, and let's take a listen to that. Still got the amount knob, so I can change the level of that modulation very easily, right from the panel. But what it's doing is that's always sending the pitch lower and coming back up to the biased or default level. And so you're listening to run mode there. We've already talked about envelope mode, and then the last mode is loop mode, and that's just basically similar to the LFO reset. And uh, I'll try and come up with an example of it that, let's say we have a fairly slow cycling envelope here. I can catch it at either the top or the bottom of the cycle. And anywhere in between. But in loop mode, you always hit it at the same point in the cycle. Now, what about the shape? I'm going to hold the shift key, and uh, I'm going to try and get us a little bit more of an exponential type shape there. And then I always try to make sure to reset the timing after I've done the shape to make sure it's what I want. And uh, so this is just a little blip. And the important thing about the cycling envelope is that it can go quite fast. Now, what does the hold knob do? That adds basically a plateau in the middle. So this is going to be some of those sweeps that are separated by a level time. And 
And so you probably already see that this could be some interesting stuff for sound design. So it's pretty cool that with a cycling envelope, you can give an effect that almost sounds like a delay on the microfreak. But before we leave this, I should say that we're perfectly set up now to do some FM synthesis. I'm going to turn this dwell time from the hold off to start with, and I'm going to turn the cycling envelope rise time to about a millisecond near the bottom, and same for the fall time. So that's going to give us a modulation that's quite quick, and it's a modulation of the pitch. So this is basically FM synthesis. I'm going to open up the filter a little bit. By changing these cycling envelope parameters, we can get a lot of different effects. the modulation so that we have basically full control from the amount knob. that flat top from the hold sustain knob can actually give some cool effects too. You just have to kind of keep it short. It basically becomes like you're modulating with a square wave. So just to make it clear what's going on with no cycling envelope, you get this. Nice tone, but pretty standard, but then you can take it up to this. Some great metallic sounds. Alright, so before we get into the last part of this video, which is about granular synthesis, I want to take a look at a couple of presets that I did. And these are just to show sort of the power of the cycling envelope to just be a second envelope and not cycle at all. So this first one, I'm going to turn the amount down and let you hear the sound without that. <laughs> Now what's going on there? I've got the timbre, and this is in 2-op FM, so that's the amount of modulation, is hooked to the regular envelope, and then I've got the cycling envelope. Let me spin the cursor over here. Um, that's going to be hooked to the sustain of the main envelope. So again, a way to use the cycling envelope to modulate the volume of the sound. And so right now, we don't get that. 
But when I turn this up, I've got the cycling envelope at a different time scale, so different rise time and fall time as compared to the main envelope, and so you hear a lot more complexity to the sound. <laughs> I'm going to try and enhance that even more by... That's a little more noticeable. And so that's the sort of sound profile that you could not get from a single envelope, but with two of them it's quite simple. And I could uh, change the timing on this envelope to make it just cut out a tiny bit. Yeah, so I can basically delay its onset and then make it come back real fast. And then I've got another double envelope preset that I did. In this case, it's going to be the cycling envelope to the timbre of the superwave. So that's a detune. And then I've also got the cycling envelope hooked to the cutoff. And then the regular envelope is hooked to the cutoff. That's just basically through the filter amount knob. And so let me start by turning the cycling envelope off so you can hear that. And so that's pretty standard, but by having that cycling envelope hooked to both the detune and the cutoff, you get quite a different effect. And these rise times, that's a five second rise time, and a, it's a pretty short fall time. I'm going to change that. Then, uh, so the detune comes on quite slowly. And then drops away real fast. And you can think about all kinds of different things you could do with that. But I just figured I'd show a couple of examples of that type of envelope sculpting. So now, to start with, what is granular synthesis? So a while back I did a video about granular synthesis on the electron model samples and had a lot of fun doing that and went into a lot of detail about it. If you want to learn more about this type of thing, that's probably a pretty good place to start. It really changed how I think about synthesis in general. So when I started looking at the Microfreak, I started thinking, well, how can I get that sort of sound? out of this new device. Now, what do I mean by granular synthesis? You can just think of a grain of sound as just a little tiny blip, something in the 10 millisecond to 100 millisecond range. And that little blip of sound is gonna have maybe some pitch information to it, maybe some timbre information, but alone you wouldn't really get much out of it. So think of a lot of those grains coming at you and it gives a characteristic sound that can have a lot of different type of aspects to it. So there are things like uh, where the sounds are in the stereo field. We're not going to get into any of that today because the Microfreak is a monaural device, but just think of kind of like a very miniature Krell type thing where that you're going to have maybe some low sounds, maybe some high sounds, and it's got just sort of a nice sort of like bathing type of quality to it. Getting down to specifics, there's a type of granular synthesis called synchronous granular synthesis where that you've got a grain and then a delay. And you can think of this as a train of blips. And so in some ways it's almost like a square wave or something that you can uh, do pulse width modulation on. But instead of a square, it's an actual grain here that has some structure. You can also think of this as something that is being looped. So instead of that, just a loop. That's why this is sort of a thing that's kind of easy to do on a sampler. Synchronous granular synthesis has sort of a fundamental frequency associated with it based on this loop. And yet, when you go to quasi-synchronous granular synthesis, that loop length changes. And it gives a sound that I really like. It's a little bit more broken up and disrupted than when you just have a fixed loop. So think of a blip and then some distance down the line, another blip, 
and you kind of merge all of that together add in some reverb and you can get some really cool sounds so how does that translate onto the microfreak though let's take a look and so just a caveat up front the granular synthesis on the microfreak may not be everybody's cup of tea but it's the sort of thing that could be part of ambient or noise music or maybe a component of a broader soundscape I hope at the very least that you get something out of the patching methods. I think we're kind of far enough along to where that I'm not going to build the patch up from scratch. Instead, we'll just sort of inspect the existing preset. Now, we're going to look at one that I've got called QS1. That just stands for quasi-synchronous one. And to start with, you'll see that I've got a connection between the cycling envelope and the pitch. And I just want to say that all of the ones that I've done, I think I've done like seven of them, it's like just part of it is you want the cycling envelope to have some influence on the sound. It could be on other parameters like wave, timbre, or shape. And I feel like that once you get that into the sound that you can get some nice granular types of things. But think of it as a little blip where that right now the rise time is basically set at zero and I've got the fall time is quite low at three or four milliseconds and then no hold time and what that's going to do is that as the envelope starts to cycle i've got it in loop mode you could have it in run mode it doesn't really matter at this rate but definitely don't want an envelope mode for this sort of thing um, once that starts to run it's going to have that periodic sort of clicking or tick on the sound and in this case it's through the pitch you can also do it through the sustain, which I do in another one, or even through the cutoff. But the uh, next thing is that the envelope is going to go to the timbre. We're in the wavetable synthesis method, so that's going to be the position on the wavetable. And that's going to also allow me to sort of like move through the wave parameter to change what these sounds are like. And so you can change the table with wave and then the uh, envelope is going to be pushing us through and, and that's not the cycling envelope the main envelope is going to be pushing us through the position on the wavetable and then meanwhile the cycling envelope is going to be clicking along and what gives this more character though is to have the low frequency oscillator set in a stepped random mode and add a pretty high uh, frequency I've got it maxed out actually at 100 hertz and I've got it targeting the fall time so as I said that was at like three milliseconds so when the LFO goes low that's going to pull it down to basically zero and when it goes a little higher um, you'll get a range of frequencies for the cycling envelope a range of rates for the cycling envelope that affect the pitch at varying rates as the LFO goes through its random steps. And then I've also added in a pressure sensitivity that is routed to VCO parameter three, which is the chorus. I've got a long attack time of about almost six seconds and the uh, decay time of about 10 seconds. And this is gonna make it sort of slowly sweep through some of the um, wavetable position parameters. So let's take a listen. And you can hear that chorus when I push hard. Turn that up a little. Now I'm going to increase the influence of the cycling envelope. And so I see that as sort of a default quasi-synchronous granular synthesis sound. At least it kind of matches up with some things that I've done on the Digitact and on the model samples. 
Now I'm going to step through some of these wavetables to see if it gives some different sounds. <laughs> So I like how that turned out, but I want to move on to some of the other patches that I did. Some of these are a little bit more elaborate, but I think the basic concept of having these cycling envelopes sort of get changed by the random LFO is kind of a fundamental part of the quasi-synchronous thing that I'm trying to do here. This one, this QS2 uh, preset, I've got the cycling envelope targeting the wave parameter, which in this case is again the wavetable and then the timbre is the position. So this is uh, mangling the wavetable quite a bit using the cycling envelope. And you can really hear it with that. Still got the chorus. I'm going to check some of these parameters. Some of that is pretty gnarly. I'm going to try and filter it out a little. Okay, and then let's move on to QS3. That one is... Uh, I think it's pretty similar. The main thing to check is the uh, synthesis type, virtual analog. It's got more of a kind of a digital uh, video game type of quality to it. And uh, then let's move on. QS4 is, uh, that's using two operator FM. I'm not going to spend a whole ton of time on these, uh, but we'll just take a listen. This one's based on the format. That one has sort of a bubbly, watery type of sound. Um, then uh, this one is based on the also the two operator FM. In this case, I've got the pressure going to cut off, and the uh, LFO is going to the pitch as well as the fall time. And then I even made a new one while I've been working on this video. This last one is the seventh one. And uh, I changed it up a little bit to give the LFO more of a, uh, a smoothness. So I'm using the sine wave. And it makes a big difference. And I kind of like the sound quite a bit. It's got a reverb -y type sound, even though there is no reverb. Nothing on the pressure in this case. This is really just sort of taking some of the granular ideas and pushing them towards more of an FM type of sound. Krell sounds and the granular sounds that you can get out of the Arturia Microfreak. And they actually go quite well together. Last night I decided to play some of those presets through the Zoom multi stomp. I was using the mangled space reverb setting and thought it turned out pretty good. 
Now, take a look at that to close this video out, and I will be back in the next video to talk about the sequencer and modulation sequences. So, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.